Today we're going to learn about how to solder. Before we begin, let's learn to say it right. It's spelled S-O-L-D-E-R, but it's pronounced solder. So we're going to solder equipment by using solder. One of the first things we have to make sure of is that we're actually dealing with solder. Solder is very malleable. I can bend it. I can pull it. I can stretch it. I can break it with my fingers. I can't do that with regular wire, so make sure you're always using solder. Now that I've heated the soldering iron, I'm going to clean it by wiping it against a, a wet sponge, wet paper towel, even a steel wool, anything to clean the tip. After I've cleaned the soldering iron, I want to tin the soldering iron. That means applying, melting a little bit of solder around the tip of the soldering iron. What this does is it helps the thermal conductivity of the iron, and so when I apply the heat to the pin and the pad and the leads, it's going to melt it a lot easier. Now that our pieces are put together, we're going to solder. So let me get out the soldering iron, and it's already hot. I've cleaned it. What I'm going to do right now is tin it. Again, I want the heat to transfer really quickly off the soldering iron onto the pad. So I'm going to bring the soldering iron to the pad and touch the pad and the lead together and then I'm going to put a little solder on it for about two seconds and then I hit it with solder. What I'm looking for is when I'm done I want a nice shiny little Hershey Kiss. So if you can take, if you see this, I'm putting there and I put just enough solder so that I get a little mound on the solder, uh, on the pad itself. I don't want to get too much solder because I don't want the solder to uh, splash over to another pad and that would cause a short. So if you see I'm putting in I'll heat the thing, heat the pad for about two seconds, put the solder on it, melt it, and then take both off. So uh, okay a little more tinning. Okay heat both pad and lead for two seconds, melt the solder on the other side, let it melt, and then you know, just put a little more on there, and then last one, heat, melt, and there we go. And now we're done. Now that we've soldered our connections, we're going to uh, trim off the excess leads with a set of wire cutters and we just go ahead and trim just the excess leave right up to the Hershey Kiss mound 
and cut the rest off. Usually it's a good thing to put your finger on top of the lead so that the lead doesn't um, spring away, jump. Sometimes they will uh, s jump when you cut them. So, and it's not always necessary to uh, wait until the end to cut. Sometimes you have to cut first and then solder the next set. So it, you don't always have to wait to uh, solder at the end. Now, let's take a look at the uh, connections here. Notice I have one little nice Hershey mound, Hershey Kiss, for the solder connections. What I'm looking for is I don't want there to be a jump or a short. I don't want there to be any kind of a drip between the soldered connections. Each little pad shows up as its own distinct pad and I don't want to have any solder uh, drip over to the other side. That would cause a short. So if you'll notice, uh, the circuit board has the green plastic over it and then it has the co bare copper part. The What I want to solder is only the bare copper part. I don't want my solder to drip over to another one that's close by. So right now I'm inspecting and making sure that they're each soldered connected. Now here, if you look, uh, this one these are each separate ones, but this one right there, they are connected. So when you solder, they will show up together. That's okay.